Hello fairy lovers. Some of you have been asking me to make some more fairy gardens because this is the time of year that we start to incorporate our fairy gardens with the outdoors. So I'm going to show you some fairy gardens today that you can make inside or outside with just a gathering of some little ingredients that you might already have. So this is this is the kind of thing I carry around with me when I want to work on fairy gardens on different parts of the house or garden. And you know, you've seen some of my videos where I've had lots of gadgets that I put into fairy gardens. I do have more stuff, but today I have a little basket that I gathered some things that we're going to use for these fairy gardens. So let me show you what we're going to work with today. One of my boxes of stuff. If you're going to start making fairy gardens, you should start to gather some stuff. <laughs> Like maybe you went to the beach and you found some seashells or you had some clothing that had some embellishments on that you don't need anymore. Save them. You went outside and went for a walk and you found some nice shiny round pebbles or maybe somewhere out of a little stream. Pick them up and save them in your little fairy box. This is a nice way to save your things. I have a box that you can adjust the the uh, sections and you know when you go to the store and you find glitter on sale okay pick some up or we have some beach thing that were on sale little pieces miniatures you could find these things anywhere not just in the fairy garden section they may be in the in a home improvement section um, there's some things that come from jewelry <laughs> and I just Cut up an old necklace sometimes when you, uh, the beads you have break, you can save the beads <laughs> and you'll find a use for them somewhere in a fairy garden because fairies love jewels. <laughs> so start yourself a little box and then when the day comes that you want to put one together, you don't have so much of an expense trying to find things that you know cost a lot of money to put into a little garden. Fairies love findings anyway. <laughs> they like to find a thimble or they like to find a pretty stone and that's what they put in their areas where they live. So that's what we want to make, a, a garden that invites fairies. Now, I did go to the dollar store. This is Dollar General. I got these packs of fairy things for a dollar, of course. And my gosh, what a savings. Instead of going to a craft store, and buying a card like this for eight dollars we got the whole card with three pieces on for one dollar pretty awesome and you can start to get creative as you think oh this fox might look good with that fairy and so on okay and along the way i have some other bigger pieces we're just going to hang on to them and see if there's a use today because we're going to design this as we go all right now, in my basket here is more like tools. I usually keep a tweezers with me to help me place things where I might not want to get my fingers if there's some glue involved or something like that. I have a glue I can recommend to you. It's called Wellbond, and it's really a nice, good, sturdy glue. It will work with mosaics. It will work with any kind of stones or placement that you have in a fairy garden that you don't want the things to move because you won't be able to move them after you use that. So sometimes it's needed, sometimes not. And I usually keep some pieces of flower rings or old candle rings where you, you can get little uh, flowers cut off just to stick into a, a garden path. Um, I, keep some, I keep some twine handy, and we're going to use that today, you'll see couple pairs of clippers that cuts through things that are tough and today I'm going to use some reindeer moss. Did you ever hear of reindeer moss? Well it's a fantasy kind of moss but it comes from real moss that has been colored and it's the kind that is very airy and fluffy and when you put a piece of something like this into your garden, it just adds magic to the garden. So I bought a package of this, and it had all these 
different colors in the package. We'll find the right color for the right situation here. I also keep handy some seed beads. These are just glass beads. They can be any color, but they really reflect the light. So when we have the garden all finished, we might want to toss a few of those in to really dress it up. And then I keep a bag of stones handy, and these are glass stones. And I know if you have seen my fairy gardens, you see these kind of stones throughout. They can either be making pathways, or they can be making something look like water, dew drops, a lot of uh, uses to get your imagination going. We have beads, we have everything. Please, if you're going to make fairy gardens, start your own basket of stuff. And it becomes so easy to put a fairy garden together. All right. Now, I also wanted to show you for today, I bought a special little treat. And anything that I have in here that I can share the links for you to find these things, I'll put them in my description box. Okay, this is a box of air ferns. Now, these are awesome for fairy gardens because you don't really have to plant them. And can you see, this is a variety box. These are live air ferns. And I found that they're very hard to find locally. <laughs> so I sent for them and I'll give you that link. But look at the different styles that we have here. And these are all live plants. They just came yesterday in the mail. And they're beautiful. And imagine them situated with a fairy. This came with a misting bottle that you can use to keep your plants fresh. But they just need a drop of water now and then. There's instructions that come with them. All right, I just want to show you them. That's one thing that we have to choose from that's really special. And what are we going to build these fairy gardens in? Hanging glass globes. Now, I didn't open the box yet because I wanted to open it with you. Let's open this. Seems like it was packaged very nicely. And I'm hoping. Wow, look at this. These are going to be the most special little fairy gardens. These are glass globes. They have a flat bottom. They have an opening in the side. And they also have a loop on the top where you can hang them. You can hang them or sit them. So they're going to make really cute fairy gardens. Now, of course, we need small pieces for these. So I'm going to get these ready, and I'll show you how to make a couple different themes in some of these little globe fairy gardens. And along in the package came some twine. So I don't need my twine that I carry around, but we can uh, tie twine on top of these so they can be hung nicely. All right, so we'll get three of them out here and we'll put three fairy gardens together. All right. I'm going to start by taking some twine and tying that on the top loop so the person who receives this fairy garden can hang it if they wish. Now this comes with long pieces which is great because sometimes people will hang this at a hook near the ceiling or they can adjust it for different levels. So what I'm going to do here is Tie a knot in the end so that it can't come open. And halfway. What's that? Are you having a snack? <laughs> Brooke's getting hungry while I'm spending time making fairy gardens. All right, we're just going to loop this through and then this way it won't fall apart. person who receives this can adjust the length of the 
the cord to fit their situation. But if they don't want a cord at all, they can snip off the, the string. Okay, I'll just show you on this one. We'll make the rest of them without the cord. All right, I was thinking on the first one to make this the little beach scene with a nice big pelican that I have. So I'm going to choose this size of an air fern because I think it goes good together. And maybe we could put in this globe a little picket fence. It kind of looks like a fence at the beach. And let's start out by using some decorative sand. This is just pretty beach sand. It's kind of tan in color, but it's a little bit glittery. So I'm going to take this sand and just take a big spoon and put it inside. Now if you think you're giving this fairy garden or you have it in a place where it's going to get a lot of uh, traffic or people picking it up, you might want to glue some of these things in. But in this situation, I like to keep them without glue if possible because I often change my fairy gardens around. <laughs> get a different idea and you see a new fairy and you want to try something different then you can still use the same globe over and over again. So a nice healthy amount of sand in here will give you something to sit everything in. Just don't go up as high as the doorway and you'll be okay. All right, let's start by placing the fence. Now this is a little piece of fence that I picked up along the way in one of these fairy garden supply stores and you can see that it has a wire woven in between all the pickets. So we're just going to form it the way you want it to be inside this globe. And put it in there. I think in the back would be nice. And if you stick it down to the sand, it pre stays pretty stable. Then we'll take the pelican, which is a pretty big guy here, but he fits. Push him into the sand a little bit and push the sand around him. And that keeps him pretty much upright and he looks like he belongs there. Alright, then let's take the air fern and we'll position that over here by the pelican. And remember, to keep this thing healthy, just give it a little mist or drop of water every once in a while and it survives for a long time. Now I think it needs a little color. What do you think? He'll be swinging around a little bit on a rope. So we'll add a little color or a little element. I think I'd like to add a piece of this reindeer moss and try to choose a color that picks up something that's in there like his beak is bright orange so i'm just going to pinch off a little bit of this orange reindeer moss that's what's nice about having some variety around at your house so you don't have to start at zero every time you want to make something you can just take a pinch of this and a pinch of that so see the, the reindeer moss looks like reindeer antlers if you open it up. That's where it gets its name, I believe. So I just want to make a skinny piece here. And we'll push this into the side. I think that dresses it up. Don't you see how that picks up the color off the beak? That's pretty sweet. I think that's cute. Alright, there's one. Look how easy that was. Just a few little pieces. Let's set that aside and work on the next. Alright, this time we're going to make a little dressy fairy. I found this little fairy, which I just love her. Look at how pretty. And she has little glittery wings. She's a real cutie. So we're going to place her in the middle of some pretty stones. To get started, I'm going to use another kind of sand. This is the one I used in the previous one, and it's the little tan. But this one 
is actually ground up stone that's white. I've never used this one before. But can you see how it glistens like glitter? See how nice and shiny that is? So again, I'm going to use my spoon. And we're going to start by giving it a base. I think when we have this kind of gravelly, sandy base, it gives you a good place to sit things. It keeps things from rocking around. All right. Now, the most important part is the fairy here. But we're going to give her some pretty stones to sit on around her. So I would like to add some nice glass stones. See if we can find several here the same color. And sometimes if you put a lot of blue stones together, it looks like they're in water. So we're going to stay away from the blue stones for this one. But we want to make it like nature, so we're going to add a couple of tan, light color brown. Some of them have some nice iridescence to them, and we can mix them together. Kind of like that. So let's start by putting her in near the back. And we'll add some nice stones now. Sometimes that little tweezers I was telling you about comes in very handy. And sometimes you can place these little items and then place them all over again after you see how they look. You can change your mind. That's the nice thing about having something that's not glued in there. You know, a lot of times I think little fairies should have friends with them of some kind. And I think this little fairy would like to have a fox. She looks like a woodland type fairy to me. So right beside her, we're going to take one of these Dollar General foxes. And I'm going to place, I'm going to place him in there and nearby. Keep her company. Alright. I'm going to brighten up one stone right here. Now, a very small globe like this, you don't need a lot of things, but you have a couple things that add interest there. So, what else could we add? We want to add an air fern with her. Let's see if we have a small one. There's a teeny tiny one, and it shows some life to be next to this fairy and it seems like it would make her seem like she's in the woods. So let's get that in there. I'd like to put it a little bit behind her so let's move her, let's move her out for a minute get this guy in. And we'll put the fairy right back where she was. This way you can reach the fern if you want to put a sprinkle of water in there. And situate her in the, in the sand. Now if we want to make this look a little bit more like it's in the, in the woods, we can add colored beads. Alright, I opened up this bag of a necklace that I had one time that had wooden brown beads on it. And I think that might be a good choice using some of those wooden beads because it'll look more like it's a wooden area. So you can see I have wooden, nice wooden beads. 
we're just going to press them in there. It looks like uh, they could be little logs laying around her area. Makes it more natural looking. And there's different shapes here. So we'll get a couple different shapes. How do you like that one? She's a cute little woodland fairy. Alright, we're going to leave this one as a tabletop fairy. I think she's really cute to look at from all sides. I don't know how much you can see with all this glare. But there's an example of one that you can put together with a few little pieces. And I think she's really turned out cute. All right, let's make another one. Okay. You having fun? I'm having fun. <laughs> Fairyland. I'm having fun. We're going to make one more here for you. And this time I'm going to use one of these little fairies. Again, think of it three for a dollar. That's pretty nice. Or you can choose a... Something else that you like better, that's fine, but this is a really cute set here. I don't know, maybe they'd like to be together in there, some of them. Two of them have yellow wings. Maybe they're sisters. <laughs> this is so much fun, you just have to do it. <laughs> if you need a break for your imagination to go crazy a little bit, try it. It's so much fun. All right. We'll, be, we'll put the sisters in here. Reminds me of me and my sister. Reminds me of my nieces, Autumn and Ember. <laughs> They're twins. Awesome. All right. Put a little sand in the bottom. It works good for getting us stabilized here. All right, now what else do we want to put in with these girls? Do we have an air fern that will still fit into this globe? These are pretty big. Here's a nice little one. Looks like a pineapple. Let's try that one. Now what kind of uh, color would we mix with the yellow wings and the pretty little dresses that they have on? We want to use some of these reindeer mosses in here in this one too. How about if we pick up the pink colors from the flowers? We add some pink reindeer moss, some darker pink, and we'll start building from there, okay? I'm going to use my tweezers again. And we'll put the fairies in first. One on that side, one on this side. And then we'll take this nice little air fern. I know Rick's really good at getting nice close-up shots so you can see this stuff real close. We'll put that right back there in the middle. All right, they're sweet. Now a little bit of this pink to get your eyes rolling here on these girls. Look at that nice piece. This stuff is so neat. It's soft and flexible, and you can put it any way you want. So, we'll put this across the front. And I think, uh, put it a little bit off center so we can add something else. I need to add something else there. I'm just going to put the mushroom. I think it's too big. What I think would look nice in the middle of there is a little bird bath or something for um, 
See this little bird bath here has a ladybug on it. I think that would look cute in there. It needs a little girly touch. We'll stick that in the sand and situate that. And then spread them out a little bit. Now that's a nice little area for fairies to play. Reading their books and playing with flowers. Oh, well, they are really sweet. And again, we can tie a rope on this if you'd like. Let's take a look at the three together. All right, I think we have this one looking good. Let's put the three together. Now, all three have air ferns. Tell me, Rick, can you see them without much glare? Yep. Is that a good angle? They look good. Okay. These are great little gifts that you can give to someone, or they're nice for you to create just for yourself. Also, it's such a relaxing thing. It's like making a Zen garden, and it's so much fun to create. And they're very simple, as you can see. Just gather a few things that you can just sit down and work on them whenever you feel like it. And maybe you want to change one by next Friday you can make a new one it's so easy to change them around so have fun with it get yourself a couple little globes if you want to try this method maybe you want to try making some little globes like this it's kind of a different little fairy garden there's so many ways you can make them and have fun with it it's it's really great thanks for watching